Welcome to Can We Have a Conversation? I'm your host, Reverend Stuart Pirelli. I have five panelists here uh, to continue a conversation that we had last month uh, talking about black fathers for social justice. And so we're not going to really go through the introductions. We're going to jump right into this conversation because we've already had the introduction. We've had this conversation. It's a continuation of black men working uh, the traditional system, trying to uh, get custody for their children, fighting uh, a, a system that is biased, a system that is not fair. And so I have these panelists, uh, Kerry Ross, Frank Smith, uh, Tyrone Parquet, and Logan, Mr. Logan, and so um, Galen Logan. And so I, I want to um, jump back into this conversation. We've had some discussions prior to even coming in here today. And I just want to stay in that vein and continue to talk about uh, how do we uh, fight this system? How do we uh, take a system that is prejudiced, a system that is really not in the favor of the father, and, and, and get some equality? What, what, what would you say, uh, and I, I started with you last time, Carrie, so why don't we start with you, Logan? Uh, what, what do you think it would take for us as black men to be able to have equal rights with our children? Mm. I'm going to go back to the original question, which is how do we fight the system? And I want to rephrase that a little bit. Okay. And just start from the standpoint is that there are multiple systems that we're facing. And the first system is the system of self. Mm -hmm. uh, and I believe that as opposed to fighting it, it it's really about embracing the system of self, mm -hmm. uh, embracing and learning and understanding the system of self. Mm -hmm. Because once we do that, then we have created a foundation so that we're not reacting to the other systems. Mm -hmm. We're actually using those other systems to fulfill our purpose. Uh, and I believe that we're in a situation now with our men, mm -hmm. with our fathers, with our families and our communities, where we're constantly reacting to the external systems mm -hmm. that we are being subjected to. And so as long as we're reacting, mm -hmm. we will never get ahead. Mm -hmm. We will never be able to become empowered enough to be able to master, mm -hmm. uh, number one, ourselves, but also the environment that we live in. So I believe it's a, it's a process where, uh, number one, in that whole aspect of the system of self, mm -hmm. is understanding self. Mm -hmm. Where did I come from? Mm -hmm. Who do I belong to? Mm -hmm. Who am I accountable to? And once we begin to ask ourselves those questions, which are not being asked of our boys mm. uh, at this point, then we will have a better footing and an understanding of how we can master and manipulate and bring to fruition the things that are necessary for us to be able to generate a legacy uh, where our children's children's children are going to benefit. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to just say this, and I'm going to leave it alone and keep it short, but it's kind of like having a 20 chapter book mm -hmm. and starting at chapter 10 mm -hmm. and reading forward. Mm -hmm. Now, you may be able to get a whole lot of those 10 chapters, mm -hmm. but you will never fully get a full understanding mm -hmm. of the, the, the totality mm -hmm. of that book. Mm -hmm. And so we have been brought into this, this country, into this land, mm -hmm. uh, as enslaved people. Mm -hmm. And so when we came over, there was a disconnection that was made mm -hmm. between who we are who we belong to, and who we're accountable to. Mm -hmm. And so we've just been operating from uh, the external systems that we were subjected to. Uh, so uh, I'm, I'm going I'm to close with that. There's a whole lot more I can say. No, no, that. no, that's good because that actually picks up from what the, the conversation that we had earlier. And, and I'm glad that you said that because a lot of this is a lot of young people do not know their history, mm -hmm. and they don't know their identity. And there's an identity crisis here. And, 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 and even the, the fathers who are not fighting for the fathers, or for the, for the children themselves, don't know the history and have identity issues and really can't embrace the system because they don't know how. That's right. So then that's a great way of starting this conversation. I appreciate your input on that because, um, Carrie, you said something similar to and I don't know if you want to go back and repeat, but it was talking about the historic parts and, and the, the slavery and all of that. Because people always say, oh, we're going to go back to that? You know, that was 300 years ago. But it's still affecting us. Mm -hmm. It's still affecting us 
And even when the young people don't even know, they don't know about Roots. Mm -hmm. You know, the movie Roots and, 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 you know, they don't know about what happened with the slaves and because that's not something they But can teach. I interject yes. real quick, Stuart, and, and that's that, because a lot of times I, I hear conversations, and especially talking to young people, where we have this thing that slavery was chapter one when it wasn't. No. And, 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 and so if we start at, cha at, at, at slavery as being chapter one, we have been relegated to a certain position in this society, You're right. which we will never be able to come up from. That's right. So slavery was actually, uh, I would say, chapter uh, out chapter 15 yeah. out of a 20 chapter right. book right because there was a whole lot that happened before that Absolutely. when we open up any world history book mm -hmm. we can go into any store any mm -hmm. library they're going to start with the roman empire mm -hmm. when we know if you've done any kind of research mm -hmm. there was 10 plus thousand years mm -hmm. of civilization mm -hmm. prior to the roman empire mm -hmm. and the roman empire was basically just a combination of accumulation of what they took from those civilizations right, before. Right. So and, and a lot of us don't get that. Mm -hmm. We don't understand it. I know college educated people that still go off the basis that the Roman Empire mm -hmm. started our, 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 our world history. Well, and, and that's a travesty. And, and, and that, that, that's, a, uh, that's very enlightening. And it's also, I have a smile on my face, but it ain't funny. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. our people don't like to learn. I was going to say that. Okay. We're we just being honest right yeah. here on this show, Are right? Are we? And, and it's not just our children. Mm -hmm. um, um, I remember when I first started learning, mm -hmm. and some stuff was just coming spiritually, but then when the natural came, when I had to open the books or go on YouTube or Google, I remember the first impression I had, man, I don't feel like reading all this. Mm -hmm. I'm just mm -hmm. telling the truth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I said, wow. Well, the schools teach our children what they want them to know. Mm -hmm. So, like, the whole thing with slavery, I kept hearing Martin Luther King, mm -hmm. and they didn't have no <laughs> right. heroes before slavery right. It right. taught in the school. And the kids were tired of Martin Luther King mm -hmm. and, and Frederick Douglass. Mm -hmm. That's all they heard. Mm -hmm. So I said, wow, you know what? Even, even uh, alcoholics mm -hmm. can have an N.A. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Drug users mm -hmm. can have a place to go mm -hmm. to, to, to release mm -hmm. and get clean mm -hmm. and get healed. Mm -hmm. But we never have. Never have. We've never had any system to deprogram the stuff that we've been taught that's not correct. That's right. And when we bring up that, what you started out mm -hmm. with, is, oh, y'all playing that race card? Ain't no card being played. Mm -hmm. This is the truth. Mm -hmm. But the truth has to start with us mm -hmm. as the men. Mm -hmm. We the kings. Mm -hmm. And we have to teach our young ones. And some of them going to be willing, some ain't. But it's our responsibility to first teach ourselves. It's interesting that you said that because in seventh grade in Chicago, that's where I grew up, it was the first time I learned of another history. Mm. And it was the librarian during the reading time. She started reading to us about African history. Mm. That there was thousands of thousands of years of these kings and queens, these inventors, and I got intrigued by it. But I only, I didn't, never got tested on that. <laughs> and the next time that I got frustrated, yes. I'm in seminary because I wrote a paper about some African theologians mm -hmm. that didn't, it didn't Watch out fit now. with the Eurocentric history. Mm -hmm. And so the teacher said, that portion of your paper, which was a 30-page paper, mm. That's not void. Is, is null and void. And so what I did was I accepted the F. Mm. But the fact is, is that I connected that the Eurocentric theology came from the African understanding Thank of you. God. Thank you. Mm. I said, well, you can give me the F. I will take the F. Mm -hmm. But you can't take away the truth. And I think that's one of the things that, that that's what happens when we start to learn about who we are. Mm -hmm. But I was frustrated. And, and I was mad. And, 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 and the president of the school asked me, why are you, why are you upset? I says, well, you, you, you're trying to take away a factual truth. And he said, well, you know, uh, our curriculum. Mm -hmm. uh, and see, I think what it is, it's not just that our young folks don't want to read, 
But I don't want to read something that's not about that's me. That's right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And mm -hmm. so one of the things that, that I think that does them a real injustice is that the reason why they have a problem even with us, the fathers that are standing up, and I know fathers that are standing up, mm -hmm. Amen. And, and they're standing up. And the problem is, is that they can't see the connection because they don't have a history mm -hmm. to a father who is a hero, mm -hmm. who's a king, who's an inventor. Mm -hmm. They don't know the story. So we become a blank slate in front of them. So now, remember the one thing I learned. You can get rid of somebody if you've justified that they're not human. Mm -hmm. And that's what they did. You know, th this is the thing that, and, and I'm going to go back because I'm, I'm going to continue to stay uh, connected to the conversation of where we started. And that conversation is, uh, it, even when we talk about the historic part, there's a historic part about your judicial system. Uh, this didn't just happen where men were where they were, or where they are. It started when men was abusing their rights. And so they were having women uh, pay for them to go to medical school. And, and then after they finished the medical school, they'd leave them and they would not, they'd be housewives, you know, committed to helping their spouse. And so it went from one extreme, everything in, in the favor of the man, he leaves, he gets the house, he gets all of this, or the actor that was in Hollywood that made all the money, and all of a sudden he decides he wants to get a younger wife, and then he leaves, her broke. And so they went from one extreme to now everything in the favor of the woman. And we didn't know how to handle that situation. And, and, and you talked about learning and reading and, and there's a lot of documentation when you go through the judicial system. You, you have to fill out a lot of documents. You have to read a lot mm -hmm. about the law, mm -hmm. especially if you're not able to have uh, a lawyer and, and, and someone mm -hmm. to represent you. You have to represent yourself, mm -hmm. which means you have to do research. Mm -hmm. And you have to go back and see the history because you have to start quoting other laws that relates to where you are. And so I, that's the, the thing I want to talk about is continue to, how do we help other young men, or men, not only the historic part, but the learning part, and to be able to have the tenacity to continue the fight? Well, one of the things that's very, very clear that's, that has that happened, one is we have to first We've got to know the history, and we've got to also understand that that's not our history. That, that, that happened in the Eurocentric uh, uh, right, uh, right. community. Mm -hmm. uh, that happened with uh, white males. Mm -hmm. So uh, the system that we're dealing with mm -hmm. is not a system that was designed for us. Because oh. when you start to look, when I talk to fathers mm -hmm. in prison, mm -hmm. in the church, black fathers, mm -hmm. they love their children. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I don't want to be cold because I don't, you know. But I'm going back across the water, so I don't. I can say this mm -hmm. and, and keep it in. Not all tribes of people love their children. Say that. So mm -hmm. the the system here in America had to come up with a system to try to equalize the imbalances of a man who would just leave his children, leave his wife take whatever he made and gained and say this was mine. So they came up with that system and that's what we're facing today. So when we come to court, mm -hmm. whether we can fill out that application form or not, we're coming because we, we don't get it. I've been there, I love my child. I don't understand all of this, this, this stuff about 50-50. I'm a hundred percent father. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, so one of the things is that we've got to understand, we've got to somehow help our, uh, uh, our young fathers understand this is a foreign system mm -hmm. that you're dealing with and you're going to need help. Mm -hmm. Now I know you'd have made it this far by yourself, mm -hmm. but doc, you need some help. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's one of the things that, and that's hard when 
whatever your journey is, and we got a lot of, we came at this thing, this fatherhood thing, a whole lot of different ways. But we made it through. And many of us made it through, really, because somebody was helping us mm -hmm, mm -hmm, <laughs> to mm -hmm. understand this thing. Yeah. Because we got to understand, that judge is not mad at you. Mm -mm. That judge has a system that is based on why it was set up. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The inequalities, the injustices that were being perpetrated upon women mm -hmm. and children, mm -hmm. and let's be honest, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because I know some people that come from another tribe and they don't care. Right. Mm -hmm. And see, here we are, these sensitive, loving fathers that want to, mm -hmm. what, what do you mean you, you, you want to do a study? Of, we got to come back after three months and... and and, and determine how much time you're going to spend with your child. Mm -hmm. or, or, and, or even watch you uh, interact with your child through a glass mirror. Mm. And you have to sit on the floor and act out how you spend time with your children mm -hmm. while you have a PhD psychiatrist looking through the glass seeing you. I mean, this is real. And, and, and that determines whether you can have time with your child or not. If we can, I want to go back to, um, that was personal, huh? Personal, but it's I, real. I know it's real. I it's felt real. your experience right there. And that's, 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 uh, that's degrading as well. But, but and, and let, let me just finish this. Before. But what if you don't have those skills to interact with your Come children? On. But mm -hmm. that's, what they, that's mm -hmm. what they're looking for. And so you don't know how to act that thing out. Come on. But it's not just the skills. It's the interpreter mm -hmm. right. who is behind the glass, right. mm -hmm. who is from another culture, right. mm -hmm. from another cu culture, has different standards. And, 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 mm -hmm. and what we say and how we interact. Mm -hmm. That's totally different. You know, I'm, I'm a prison, I'm prison chaplain, man. And I, I got two foreigners who are speaking in their own language, and because they're speaking loud, both of them get put in isolation mm. because it's considered aggressive. <laughs> Do you know what they were arguing about? Who was the best soccer player? <laughs> but because someone passion. didn't understand their language, Our and their passion. See, this is what mm -hmm. I'm saying, that passion. Mm -hmm. and, and so now you don't understand when I say, Hey, boy, I told you not to do that. Mm -hmm. He called him a boy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You don't understand. Uh, boy is a term of, that's what I call my son. Right, right. My son is 26 years old today. I, hey, boy. Oh, that's degrading. So that's, so you, you, we have to deal with the interpreter on the other side. We've got to change that interpreter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That interpreter's got to know us and know that that's a term of endearment. You, you, you had something. Yeah, um, it's designed mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. knock us off our posts. Um, mm -hmm. Even when you have mm -hmm. the documents this high, mm -hmm. and some of the questions are. Re <laughs> 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 okay. <laughs> and some of the questions are repeating. I got, I got, I mean, you speak on me, I got frustrated. Why do you keep asking me the same thing? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I had to calm down because I, I peep the game. Mm -hmm. They want us to get all discombobulated and confused mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and angry mm -hmm. and, and, leave. and leave. But their you children, and see, if we were, if we just keep them 100, we'll go all the way back. We will, you better not read a book. You better not know how to read. Mm -hmm. So when people say the race game and the card game and all, we should get over it, there's so much that still resonates with us mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. yeah. So when most of us come in, and we got documents this high. First of all, we're saying they don't take all that. Mm -hmm. And then second of all, it's, it's designed <laughs> to make us miss something. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. why it's so much. Because mm -hmm. they want us to miss something so they can come back and tech us again. And then we have to come back to it. They're looking to mess with our emotional standpoint. And we talked about that, the emotions. Because, and, and, and this brother helped me. <laughs> with the emotion part. Mm -hmm. Bec oh, no, that's real. <laughs> he, uh, he was saying, when you go to court, 
Just state the facts. Right. Leave the emotions mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. just talk about because they don't care about your emotion. Yes. Yes. They only want to know facts. about the facts. Right. And they only have so much time. Right. And see, when you start talking about volume, mm -hmm. A, B, C, D, and E, they don't have time to even go back to, to see the historic part about that. They just want to take it, they want to start at the 20th chapter. Mm -hmm. and, the, and, and the judges keep changing. Mm -hmm. So every time you get a chance to let this person know about what's going on and who you are and your investment in your children, it keeps changing. The game keeps mm -hmm. changing. Mm -hmm. And, and the, the rules keep changing. The law remains the same. But, but their law. Their law. But, but how as we, because we, we, somebody's watching this. Mm -hmm. And they're saying, that's me. Mm -hmm. Now, what, what do we do to help them get to a place where they don't give up? You know, because, you know, if you turn in your paperwork late and they have a deadline, they don't look at it. So it's as if you didn't turn it in. Mm -hmm. And that can cost mm -hmm. you. It can cost you dearly mm -hmm. between a game changer mm -hmm. where you could have walked away with nothing or you could be at debt $40,000, $50,000. At the root of your question was, was how. Mm -hmm. How? how? And, and, and I hear what's the solution and I would say adamantly that one of the first things that we have to do and I say we mm -hmm. on purpose mm -hmm. is we have to put in perspective that whole term they mm -hmm. and them mm -hmm. and understand that we're talking about the system mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're talking about a system mm -hmm. and so the only way to beat a system is with a system because mm -hmm. no individual is going to beat the system never right mm -hmm. so there's, there's enough of us that have experienced the system mm -hmm. that we have all the information we need mm -hmm. to develop a system that will counter that system. Mm -hmm. And what we have to do first is we got to address the, 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 the problem of why haven't we done that yet? Absolutely. Because when somebody's in that position, there should be a mechanism. Mm -hmm. There should be a vehicle in place that we have created mm -hmm. to assist that individual when they have to go through that, that issue of dealing with all of this paperwork that has been uh, brought upon them. Uh, somewhere along the line, the will, and, and we can all, I'm sure, could contribute to this, mm -hmm. there has, we have lost the will mm -hmm. to look out for the best interest of us. Say that. And we have been moving forward as individuals mm -hmm. attempting to survive. Mm -hmm. And it's not until we begin to look at the us and the we mm -hmm. that we're going to be able to thrive. I love and that. I'd say that's, 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 that's the how. No, no, that's, no, that's, that's real. right on point. That's I appreciate right point. that. Because, because I'm hoping that that's what we get. And this is not just a conversation that we're having. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping that this is the grassroots where we can create a, 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 a system like that mm -hmm. where it's, because see, if you go to any court system, they have a self-help mm -hmm. department. Mm -hmm. And it helps them but they only help them. They don't give any advice. They just tell you which form to fill out. And they don't tell you how to fill it out. Mm -hmm. And see, the thing is, when we're fighting this system, never is the culture in the equation. When I say the culture, you know, you, you can tell me you have children. The judge can say, I have children. And I've raised my children, and, and you can't tell me that I don't know what it means to be a parent. Yes, that is true. Mm -hmm. But there's still a culture that you don't understand. Mm -hmm. Because when your son goes to school, he doesn't have to deal with what my son deals with. He doesn't have to go through the landmines and the war zones. And, and, and mine don't have to, but I did. You know, and so... When, when I'm talking to you as a, as a judge and you're telling me you understand when you don't understand, well, why did your child wake up at 5 o'clock in the morning uh, to, to, to go to the daycare? That's nothing different in our culture. Our children have been waking up at 5 because we we trying to make it work. So they're used to that, but they are not used to that. Uh, the way we speak to our children is different than the way you speak. But you're going to judge me 
So, so I mean, we can do the documents, we can do the system part, but, but somehow we have to educate. I heard a guy say one time, he says, he, we should have two judges. We should have one judge that understands that culture and a judge that understands this culture. Because, okay, and, I, and I'll leave this alone. When we take an SAT test, is it for us? Do we know how, is that designed for urban communities? No. So when we're reading these SAT tests, we're not really sure what they're saying because they didn't teach that at our school. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. so, so somehow we need someone, and that's where they came with this Ebonics stuff. You know, well, you know, we didn't need Ebonics because they were basically saying, we need somebody to understand us. Mm -hmm. We need somebody to understand our language, our culture. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. it's not that we're stupid or we're dumb. We just hadn't been taught like you. Well, the system is the same thing. We, we, we're not dumb, we're not uneducated, we just don't know how the system works. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to identify our culture with a culture that, that doesn't un understand where we come from, and it wasn't ever written for us in the first place. Well, I, I, yeah, I think the reality is this. I would go further with that notion of uh, it doesn't fit, because again, the reason why the system is the way it is occurred because of another cultural problem in a, a completely different culture. I would say that if we're talking about how, we need to start talking about what system do we need to be, be in place so that when we, in fact, go into this kind of a situation, unfortunately, separation, divorce, children involved, that we need to talk about a different process for us altogether. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the country where I'm in is in Norway. They have a mediation process. Mm -hmm. It never goes to the judge. The judge, we use the court system to handle crimes. It's not a crime to uh, separate, get a divorce, and kids are separated. Mm -hmm. It's a reality. Hard hearts. That's what happens. We go our separate ways. So they have a mediation. Mm -hmm. They sit down. Now, number one, because you've been married, they cut things right down the middle. This is not higher lawyer, better lawyer, whoever's, who is sharper, more intelligent. No, 50-50. You, you signed up for this thing. There's some things that came because of your family. You had it before. That's not in the equation. Everything that happened, we're in the question. So this is a fairness thing. We start talking about what justice is. We need to start talking about, okay, what do we need to do in our context so that this not, does not become, in, this is not in the hands of somebody that don't even know you. Right, right. And that's what I wanted to touch on, if it was okay. Because mm -hmm. you asked, how do we help? So I want to look into the cameras and tell that man, that black man, you help, first of all, because quitting is not an option. Second of all, mm -hmm. I want to say that um, do your research. You have to do your research. Um, learn their system and build your own. Build your own with wisdom and knowledge. Do not fight against the baby mama. <laughs> That's not your battle. <laughs> yeah. That is well, not your battle. And keep well, that negativity away from them children. Mm -hmm. and, and stay the course and then reach out to your community. Reach out to your community. I'm, I'm pretty sure there's another brother that has been through it. Um, I'm a single dad. Um, I went through a journey that I looked up one day and I was homeless. And um, Village Connect, Galen Logan, CEO, uh, executive director of uh, Village Connect reached out and the mm -hmm. whole village came together and empowered me with a three bedroom apartment furnished from head to toe. So let go of uh, the pride, mm -hmm. uh, reach out, open up. Mm -hmm. Women been doing it forever. Yeah, and that's why they don't have ulcers, mm -hmm. okay? <laughs> so you ask, how can we help? And I believe we haven't heard from our brother. Oh, you I'm, said I'm something. To pull on you him. said something <laughs> in their uh, new organization that you started, I believe, with the hands. Of, I'm yes. Going to say that. Yes. So, so thank definitely you. started. The, thank you for bringing that up. Started an organization called Manprint, mm -hmm. where that mm -hmm. is basically uh, an indication that a father's hand has to be on the family, mm -hmm. no matter what happens between he and the mother of the children. If it comes to a split, as you mentioned, yes, very unfortunate but it does happen. And so one of the things 
as you mentioned to the father who may be watching, we want him to know that number one, you're not alone, mm -hmm. that there are many brothers who have gone through this. And so part of engaging the court system requires uh, you to get counsel. And I love the scriptural uh, direction that comes with this. In a multitude of counsel, victory is assured. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So you have to be willing to educate yourself, even if it means going to people that don't look like you. Mm -hmm. You have to go get information about a system that now will determine how your children are raised. Mm -hmm. So as you mentioned, mediation is a part of it. Well, there's a mediation process in the American mm -hmm. uh, family court system, mm -hmm. right. but the challenge is most men start out at such a disadvantage mm -hmm. because they come in with a portrait of who you are mm -hmm. to game the system, to look at you as a criminal as opposed to a father. Mm -hmm. And the minute that they can dehumanize you and make you look as like you're not a father but something you know, that should be feared and controlled, mm -hmm. then the process can be different. Mm -hmm. So part of the challenge is you, you, you have to keep the emotional part separate. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, we are emotional people. We're gesticulators. We communicate with body language, all those things. But when you're dealing with a system, uh, particularly family court mm -hmm. in America, uh, you need counsel. You, ne you need to really get some help. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that's through self-help mm -hmm. mechanisms within family court, but also it may require you to spend some money. One of the things I notice about our culture is we place value on things. Uh, we'll spend more money on preparing for a vacation, as an example, mm -hmm. than we will about educating ourselves how to be fathers. Mm -hmm. How many fathers voluntarily would go and just take a class on learning how to communicate mm -hmm. with their children? Mm -hmm. well, right. Most of us didn't have this model in front of us, mm -hmm. so we have this pride, as you mentioned, where we're not willing to reach out and get help. Most of us have to acknowledge that we have a very, very difficult past. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of things working against us, but that doesn't mean you can't win mm -hmm. as a father. Mm -hmm. It means that you have to be more intentional mm -hmm. with your time. Mm -hmm. You have to be intentional with decisions you make mm -hmm. that will impact your family. Mm -hmm. And so for the father who's struggling with being separated from his children, I would say, first of all, connect with some men in your community. Mm -hmm. Connect with some organizations. They're out there mm -hmm. that are willing to help you, as you mentioned, uh, the, the, the organization that help you. That's part of what we're doing in man print, mm -hmm. helping fathers understand that, yes, when you step into this judicial system called family law, uh, uh, they're not going to look at you as the father you've been before you got here. Mm -hmm. right. So you're going to have to <laughs> explain to them mm -hmm. in detail mm -hmm. how you've been that dad. Mm -hmm. what you've been doing, and take the emotion out. It's based on facts, what you can prove. Mm -hmm. Be willing to share documentation and stories with them about how you love your children and connect with them. It doesn't mean you're perfect. Mm -hmm. So the battle tends to be against the mother, and that's what they want. They want you to start fighting against mm -hmm. the mother because mm -hmm. what that does is it messes with the identity of the children. And in the middle of both of us, we're going to leave a legacy. Mm -hmm. We're going to leave children who are either encouraged because of our life's work, or they're going to be discouraged mm -hmm. because of what they see in us. Mm -hmm. So it starts with personal accountability. Mm -hmm. Are we willing to put in the hard work? And many fathers are already mm -hmm. doing this. Mm -hmm. Many fathers are already fighting to make sure that they show up every day and train their children and love them. There are African-American men that love their children every day, taking them to school, mm -hmm. being at the doctor, mm -hmm. making sure they get to church and have prayer in the home and all of these things. But when you're dealing with the judicial system, that really doesn't count. Mm -hmm. They're wondering, you know, one, do you have uh, economic ability to provide? Mm -hmm. That's the first thing, because the, the state doesn't want to take care of your child. Mm -hmm. And if they do, they take the father role. Mm -hmm. And we know the laws that are written that in America, if, if the woman is getting support, the father can't be in the home. Mm -hmm. that's right. so, th so that's a systematic issue, and you can't change that on your own. You have to get educated about, mm -hmm. what do I do now that this has happened? Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean you failed, because mm -hmm. many of us, you know, when we have to explain our fatherhood and our love for our children, yes, there's going to be intense emotion. Yes, there's going to be passion, because these are our children. Mm -hmm. It didn't take a court order to make the child, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but now there's a court order to actually get time with your child. <laughs> and so, yes, that's frustrating. That's right. Yes, it, it makes you angry, but you have to remember what's at stake. Mm -hmm. See, once we return to the dust, our children will be living in a time representing us in a time when we may not be there. What will they say? How will they interact mm -hmm. with a culture that doesn't embrace their manhood? Well, well let me ask you a question. I, you. I, you know, there's a part that you said, um, you said that we have to be able to, to get a representation. But what happens to the guy who, who is just making it, 
who, who doesn't have those resources, uh, the person who can't afford $150, $300 an hour attorney, uh, but, but still has a desire to want to spend time with his children, and, and, and who, doesn't have, who doesn't really articulate very well, mm -hmm. doesn't know how to speak up for their himself. Language. It, it, their language, because you know, I've been to courts where I've seen uh, brothers in the courtroom talking to the judges. You feel me? Mm -hmm. You know, you're telling the judge you feel me. Mm -hmm. You know, and the judge is not. You know, <laughs> so so so. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying, judge? Yeah, yeah. but and, and, and in his way, he seems as though he is really getting this judge's attention. This judge is saying he's a clown, right. you know, right. or he's disrespectful. He doesn't respect. So, so I'm, I'm saying that because, uh, yes, teach your kids how to communicate. And, and one of the things we do at Man to Man is, is we go around and, and we introduce ourselves and make you stand up and say who you are and mm -hmm. what you want to get. And they think it's just to put them on the spot, but it's really helping them learn That's how cool. to publicly speak. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you, and anybody can. Yeah, certain, certain practices, I just want to jump into that real quick. Uh, two quick things. Uh, the mission of Village Connect is to build the capacity of people to become more self-aware and self-directed, resulting in sustainable, positive transformation. What's key in, in that mission that we, that we pursue on a day-to-day -day basis is helping to ignite an understanding that people will have of themselves. Mm -hmm. We, we tell people at the beginning of workshops, classes, trainings, if you're not second guessing your belief system at the end of this, we didn't do our job mm -hmm. and we want to know it. Mm -hmm. So you should be walking out of this room, scratching your head, talking about, man, I, I need to take another look at this Good. and how I get down. I need to take another look at how I'm talking to my children. I need to take another look at how I'm looking at myself. Mm -hmm. uh, there's another quote I want to use by a group called Dead Prayers, okay. uh, one of my favorite uh, rap groups. A lot of people give uh, hip hop a bad name, but, it, but it's a lot of, uh, of, of groups out there mm -hmm. that are really attempting to educate mm -hmm. uh, people. But there's a, it, there's a hook in one of their songs that says, uh, are we addicted to the struggle or are we committed to success? Mm -hmm. And when I first heard that statement, it was like it made me stop and think. Because, of course, we want to, first of all, associate it with ourselves. Like, am I addicted to the struggle? Mm. Or am I committed to success? Mm -hmm. Now, when we break that down, when I broke that down, mm -hmm. and when I use it in, in my classes and groups, it becomes this whole dynamic of saying, you know what? Black people are used to struggling. Mm -hmm. Black people are used to having it hard. Mm -hmm. the, the narrative that we keep hearing over and over again that the system got it, got it in for us, mm -hmm. and that we're going to struggle, that we're going to have a high road every time. Mm -hmm. So that can become addictive. Mm -hmm. So that even if you ain't got no challenge in front of you, we'll create one. <laughs> right, right. You, you, you feel right, me? Right. Say it. And we don't feel normal if we ain't struggling. Right, right. right? We, go, we, we, we ran it out of time. We actually need to close, so I need to. Stop. I'll close this, okay. this with this comment. Mm -hmm. On the flip side of that comment is if I'm committed to success, mm -hmm. then what that means is that I need to cultivate a vision. Mm -hmm. I need to cu cultivate a vision of what success looks like. Mm -hmm. And I believe that in a lot of cases, we get past the struggle with the system, mm -hmm. and then we left alone at home with our family. Mm -hmm. And if we're not having dialogue with our children about what success looks like, mm -hmm. what a vision looks like mm -hmm. for our children, mm -hmm. then we only did half the job. No, because they're going to go right back out there in the streets, and the system is ready for them and waiting for them. You might beat them on one side. Mm -hmm. But they, they, they still coming back every single day Absolutely. to get you and to get your mind into a place of supporting the, the, uh, the ongoing aspect of the system. And I agree. I, I agree with all you brothers. Uh, one of the things that I, I wanted to talk about uh, was not sharing uh, your rejection with your children. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're going through a, a tough time, with the traditional system and you're, you're fighting against the mother or the, the courts, what do you think about not sharing uh, your rejection with your children? It's huge. It's your, it's, it's, uh, that's your power. I, uh, at 53, um, it took me to, I was about 48, 46, 46 or 48 to identify that I was suffering from abandonment. 
uh, when I was a child. Mm -hmm. I didn't really understand that process and why I was acting out. Mm -hmm. And it took me till I was in my 40s mm -hmm. to start healing. Mm -hmm. um, and so now with the separation, um, one of the biggest things that I have uh, taken on mm -hmm. to empower my children that they didn't do nothing wrong. Mm -hmm. And I watch my tongue mm -hmm. before I speak. Mm -hmm. Because some of the things my daughter do remind me of her mama, right? right. <laughs> but I can't say it for two reasons. Right. Catch this. Right. One, I can't see it because I don't want it to come out negative. Right. And the other thing, I don't want her to grab it and be like, oh, I can identify with my mama like this. Right. Come on now. Right. You right. know, because she's yeah. still missing right. her right. mother. Right. You mm -hmm. know, so mm -hmm. I make sure that I'm conscious mm -hmm. about what I deliver out mm -hmm. of my mouth. Mm -hmm. And I never give them any negative um, uh, inspiration mm -hmm. about our separation. That's uh, really good. Just yeah. recently, I uh, was uh, blessed to bring back um, the other daughter. Mm -hmm. I have two. I have the six-year-old and the eight-year-old. But my blessing, when I say my blessing, and I'll call them step, mm -hmm. but she was the conceived mm -hmm. already and was five months. Mm -hmm. And I've been feeding her since she was five months mm -hmm. old, so I call her mine. Yes, mm -hmm. sir. Yes, and sir. Um, we had been separated for 22 months. Mm -hmm. So I watched the dynamics of the separation where famous Mr. Famous Finesse and Fantastic had each other. Mm -hmm. Jaleesa had no one. Mm -hmm. And Jaleesa has suffered the most. Mm -hmm. um, so that was, that was, it was very interesting right. to say the least. Right. You know, um, the children's minds are very fragile and small. And, and all of this stuff with the courts they get a tendency to blame themselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and well, if it wasn't for me, maybe mom and dad would still be together. Mm -hmm. And so I want to piggyback and commend you on that uh, to let the child know you didn't do anything wrong. Mm -hmm. it, it wasn't anything you did that stopped this relationship from happening. Your mom and your father just d do not get along. Mm -hmm. And it was best we mutually mm -hmm. agreed on this decision. Mm -hmm. So what I believe is that sets that person free. At least any doubt that they had or any negative thoughts that they had, the cause was because of them, is erased. Mm -hmm. You know, in 2001, I, I, uh, this is the first time I'm actually sharing this, but uh, you know, in 2001, I, I, I had to make a decision, and uh, it wasn't working. And mine was a little bit heavy because uh, I had to leave uh, Norway and come back here. My mother was dying, but I also knew that the relationship wasn't working. And I remember sitting my kids down, three of them, and I said, Daddy got to go. And you know why I really sat them down? Mm. Because I didn't want them to see my feelings. Mm. I was hurt. Mm. Mm. I was devastated. Mm. But I didn't want them to have that because I know who I am. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm expressive. Mm -hmm. And I said, I can't, I can't lay that on them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to tell you, man, when I got on the plane, I balled up like a baby mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and covered myself mm -hmm. and I cried mm -hmm. nine hours mm -hmm. nonstop mm -hmm. leaving my children mm -hmm. was the hardest thing I ever did. Mm -hmm. So I set up a plan, I wiped up mm -hmm. and I set up a plan I said, ah, I got him there so I'm with my church, I'm taking off the whole time, six weeks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I spent all the time, because, and I wanted, we never did anything sad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's right. Mm -hmm. That's, that's, you know, um, I, I feel you there. I understand, you know, when we fight in this system, man, it's painful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we want to be hard, and we want to be macho, and hey, man, but I done seen some of the toughest guys, man, break down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Especially when it's that, that daughter, that son, mm -hmm. 
you know, that you gave birth to, mm -hmm. that now you have to depart. You don't. See, you used to see them every day. Now you don't see them mm. but once a month mm -hmm. or twice a year. Mm -hmm. You know, depending mm -hmm. on the situation, it's difficult. You know, and and you you can't give up. And you can't share with them <laughs> what you're going through, <laughs> you know, because then you know all kind of rage and anger and all that stuff is going to come up. Mm -hmm. And so, you, you know, mm -hmm. they, they're asking you things and you, you're trying to do fun things with them and they're, they're, they're fighting you because that's not what they want to do. Mm -hmm. and, and you're trying to do the right thing for them, mm -hmm. you know, trying to make peace and, and, and it's just still feel divided. Mm -hmm. you know? But you have to allow them to go through their process. Right. Yes. Right. Absolutely. And, and, and I, when I first witnessed how much they had missed their mother, it wasn't in their dialogue with me. Mm -hmm. It was in, they started wetting the bed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and, and, mm -hmm. and, 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 and Mr. Famous had never went to bed. I mean, he was real good at coming out of the potty train and going, getting up, going to the restroom. Mm -hmm. But I remember, you know, when he would hear his mother's voice through the phone, um, those next couple of days, his whole demeanor would change. Mm -hmm. And then he would start renting the, rest, the, the bed. And then his sister tag teamed with him. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. So one morning, yeah. I look up at two in the morning, bro. I got two beds wet. Mm -hmm. And this is where I started appreciating the yeah. struggle yes, of a sir. woman. Yes, Hello, sir. somebody. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Because yes, sir. I had to get in there at two o'clock in the morning. I'm sleepy. I'm tired. Pull but I had to pull out. them sheets out. Them I couldn't punish them. Mm -hmm. Come on now. Mm -hmm. I had to identify mm -hmm. with what they were going mm -hmm. through. Yes. Mm -hmm. And put both of them in the shower and love on both of them. Yes. And redo the beds and mm -hmm. understand that no matter how many McDonald trips, how many times to the park, I'm their daddy, but I can't be their mama. Mm -hmm. And they're going to yearn for their mother. Mm -hmm. They're going to yearn for it. Mm -hmm. So there's a process, and I'll hit you with this one before I'm done. We have Friday night movie night, and we're playing in the living room and everything. And all of a sudden, my son, at this time, he's about five. Yeah, he's about five, and he said, Dad. We need to talk like that with authority. Mm -hmm. I sat up straight like I was the son. Mm -hmm. And he said, Dad, I need to ask you a question. Mm -hmm. He said, because I've been keeping secrets, Dad, mm -hmm. and I, and, and I want to be mm -hmm. honest right now. Mm -hmm. He said, and I know my sister is going to get mad at me because I'm telling, telling some of this. Right. He said, but Dad, who decision was it for you and Mommy to separate? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. He asked me that at five years old. Mm -hmm. I answered to the best of my knowledge mm -hmm. and my wisdom mm -hmm. being put on the spot right. and took it away from him, again, putting mm -hmm. it back on us. Mm -hmm. He said, but Dad, I don't understand what would make a mom leave her children mm -hmm. and her family mm -hmm. because I love everybody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that was something that had been bothering him. Mm -hmm. And I didn't try to fix it or anything. First of all, I was on the spot, never mm -hmm. answered that, never been there. Mm -hmm. But that was what was going on with them. Mm -hmm. So they yeah. have those little talks. Absolutely. Car. They yes. have those talks yes. uh, together. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they're going to war against each other and mm -hmm. don't even understand why. Absolutely. So the dynamics of a separation and a split is very powerful. Mm -hmm. And we need to, as adults, be more engaged in their feelings, their emotions, mm -hmm. but understand it's a process that they're going to go through, too. Absolutely. You know, at Village Connect, one of the things that we have that I believe is one of the most crucial aspects of our curriculum is social emotional learning. Mm -hmm. uh, when we're working with men, we're working with fathers and, and boys in particular, mm -hmm. uh, and just really introducing to them that, that whole aspect of uh, emotion, mm -hmm. and that it's just energy and motion, mm -hmm. and that in many cases, when we don't have an understanding of that, mm -hmm. then it doesn't flow. Mm -hmm. And the whole notion is that it's, it, Feelings are not bad, mm -hmm. and many of us we've been taught, especially as males, mm -hmm. that feelings are bad, mm -hmm. that it make you weak, it mm -hmm. make you soft. Mm -hmm. You know, it's don't don't talk about your feelings. Mm -hmm. You know, and the only acceptable emotion that I grew up with that that was acceptable was anger. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. You get mad. That's <laughs> right. That's right. Puff up. Mm -hmm. Everybody accept that. Okay, mm -hmm. we know that that's what's gonna happen. Okay, yes. young boys yes. get mad. Okay, cool, cool. Now who are you gonna fight? And, and you had a fight, and everybody says that's acceptable. Mm -hmm. However. When we begin to understand that there, there, there are many, many, many more emotions <laughs> that exist, <laughs> we just can't call them by name. That's right. So we are actually emotionally illiterate. When mm -hmm. we stop and think about it, mm -hmm. when somebody says, how you feeling, brother? 
How you feeling? Mm -hmm. And you can't, you, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know. And that's what we get when we work with, I don't know. I, I don't know. Either they gonna say I'm sad, I'm mad, I'm angry, whatever the case may be. But understanding that when we get an emotion and we get a feeling that it's telling us something, mm -hmm. it's telling us something. All it is is just an indicator. Right. It's telling us something and that, that something is always connected to our beliefs mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. we make it mean something. Mm -hmm. If you say something, if you call me a broomstick, mm -hmm. am I going to get angry? Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> right. I, mm -hmm. it, it might make me laugh. Right. It's funny. Right. Call me a punk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Call me a bee. Mm -hmm. And you'll get a totally different response. Mm -hmm. and you mm -hmm. start calling a man one of those words. Mm -hmm. and, and some of us are conditioned mm -hmm. to respond mm -hmm. a certain way. Mm -hmm. Whereas, if I understand my emotions, I understand feelings, I understand my belief of who I am, mm -hmm. you can call me whatever you want to call me, mm -hmm. but it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be able to trigger my feelings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's up to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and, and there is things, anxiety, and you can probably, you know, being in the medical field, understand the anxieties, the highs and the lows mm -hmm. that these young kids, and, and they would want to characterize it and cause all kind of mental disorders, uh, mental health disorders, but they're not really mental health disorders. Mm -hmm. They just don't know how to channel these emotions. Mm -hmm. They don't know how to channel these highs and these lows. And so today they're really high and tomorrow they're really low, and, and it, it creates the thing of suicide and want to hurt themselves mm -hmm. or, you know, I just don't want to be here. And, and, and it's all because they feel like they're in the middle. Right. And so I like what my brother said earlier. You know, he had a stage where he uh, grieved yeah. outwardly mm -hmm. and acknowledged the pain of making mm -hmm. a decision to leave mm -hmm. his children behind. Mm -hmm. And when we go through divorce and separation, there is a process of losing a part of our family mm -hmm. that we never planned for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And as we all know, there are stages of grief. Mm -hmm. right. Initially, you may be shocked. Then that may turn to anger. Mm -hmm. Then you may over time become frustrated. And if you don't have a plan, mm -hmm. you said you took off the time mm -hmm. and came up with a plan and you mm -hmm. set your children down, there's a part of the separation and, and in terms of rejection that we have to let our children see us deal with mm -hmm. in a constructive mm -hmm. way, though. In a, mm -hmm. and in a way the, that doesn't important. put them in the middle and make them decide mm -hmm. mom over dad. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. the children are a product of both of us. Yes. Oh, yeah. yes. And so as a father, my role is to reinforce the respect of their mother and wanting that relationship to be intact as much as I can support that. Mm -hmm. You can't force anyone to be who they are. But as a dad, my influence is mm -hmm. to help my children understand both sides of mm -hmm. the family mm -hmm. and come up with a plan. So part of the challenge with children of divorce and separation is you know, your children are asking when they come to you and look at you and they want that time, they're asking, so what's going to happen next, dad? Mm -hmm. Where are we going? What's our life going to be like, Dad, yes. now that I'm here in this place mm -hmm. called divorce? Mm -hmm. what, they may not ask you articulate as I just right. expressed it, right. but they're wanting to know where is our future? Mm -hmm. So that comes out in many ways. And so as a father, we have to have a plan for our children to be involved in things that are constructive based on the gifts that mm -hmm. have been planted in Absolutely. them. We have to know them mm -hmm. well enough mm -hmm. to know, okay, this son may be good at this. Let me make sure he's set up mm -hmm. to get deeper into that. Mm -hmm. right. And it requires investment mm -hmm. of time and money. Mm -hmm. So we have to be willing to acknowledge that this is a uh, struggle. Mm -hmm. It is a separation. There are levels of that separation that our children deal with differently than us. So mm -hmm. first thing, I like what you said. You protected the children and allowed them to express how they're processing mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Most of us are so caught up in the rejection phase of mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. that we take it personal like we're the only ones dealing with it. Right, mm -hmm. right, right. And your, your son said, no, well, I got secrets there because yeah, they got their way of dealing yeah, with yeah, it. Absolutely. <laughs> and as a father, we have to be willing to allow them Right. to come to us and so it speaks to your relationship with them the connection that you have because you got up at two o'clock in the morning mm -hmm. to change them beds mm -hmm. and make sure that they knew it's okay mm -hmm. we'll get through this mm -hmm. and so you know part of that rejection protecting them from it there's also an aspect of us having them see us mm -hmm. go through the various stages right. mm -hmm. you know you got to make sure it's age appropriate because some things they're not ready for mm -hmm. but you got to allow them to see you 
cry out mm -hmm. in ways that are constructed. Because mm -hmm. as you mentioned, most of us, we were trained to utilize anger mm -hmm. and embrace those feelings, but the other emotions we didn't even really identify with. We don't even know how mm -hmm. to deal with the frustration and passion that we have to become fathers. Mm -hmm. And so it comes back to your plan. Mm -hmm. What are you doing now mm -hmm. with your time? Mm -hmm with your money mm -hmm. to help the children get to their future. Mm -hmm. And that requires you to partner up with people mm -hmm. and maybe get with people who may have the expertise that you don't have. You can't do this alone. And mm -hmm. so I love the way you keep referencing your organization because that those are resources that most people are not aware of. Mm -hmm. They don't know how to reach out to an agency to help them deal with now they're a single dad mm -hmm. and they may not know even how to balance a budget, mm -hmm. how to clean a bed at two o'clock in the morning mm -hmm. and how to put together a plan so that they have time mm -hmm. to invest in their mm -hmm. children. Sometimes when children come home, they're full of so many things that they've seen. And sometimes you have to be willing as a father to listen to what's going on in their mm -hmm. world. And just encourage them that, yeah, okay, so Johnny may have punched you today. What happened before that? You have to give children a fighting chance, and they need our attention. Mm -hmm. They need us not looking at our cell phone, not on the email, not mm -hmm. doing all that stuff we do, checking out with TV, mm -hmm. escaping with other mechanisms. They need our time mm -hmm. to listen mm -hmm. and then to direct them. Okay, son, this is what comes next. We're headed here and we're gonna stay this course because you're worth it. Mm -hmm. You didn't do any, and it has to be more than just words. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It has to be action mm -hmm. behind that plan. And listen, this is a journey. Mm -hmm. Th this is not a quick destination that post-divorce, you got everything's on. No, you gotta go through a stage of planning. Mm -hmm. You gotta go through a stage of learning how to now navigate Mm -hmm. As a single dad, mm -hmm. learning how to do it. If you have a daughter, you got to learn how to comb some hair. Mm -hmm. You got to learn how to, you know what I'm saying? You got to learn how to pick clothes. And right. Some yeah, of us, right. you know, if you, you had the benefit of learning that as a child, that's great. But some men never, they, they never yeah. signed up for that. This, can, this, can I interject real quick? I just want to add real quick. Also, one thing that's key, and I see it all the time, is not be afraid to make mistakes in front of your children. Yes. Absolutely. Trying to like look good all the right. time. Trying right. to look perfect all the time like I got it all together. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we just need to stop and say, hey, Johnny, man, Pop don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what to do next. Or, or. I'm confused. Or, Dad blew it. Yep, yep. I'm sorry. Yeah. I missed it. Yes. yes you know, yes. I'm really sorry. What I did, I was wrong. Please forgive me. But I love what my brother, what, what you said earlier, is because you know with the separation, the rejection, comes the fact, there's a fact in all of this. It took two to make them. Mm -hmm. And when that other side pops up, mm -hmm. you know, and you see that in your child, mm -hmm. you know, we've got to learn not to beat that child over the head with that other person because we got rejected by that person. Oh, no. mm -hmm. right. and, and see, that's one of the things mm -hmm. that, you know, uh, we've got to get in touch with the fact that we got hurt. We got, you know, we got feelings. Mm -hmm. It's all right to have feelings, but it's not all right to lay that stuff down to the next generation mm -hmm. because that's, that's what we saw we didn't, we didn't, we didn't match up, but now I'm going to say, because, you know, I, I, you know, I grew up in a family, man, and you look like your daddy, you act like your daddy. Mm -hmm. That was the worst thing to say developmentally to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Especially if you don't like your daddy. But you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I like my daddy, no, but I'm still, saying, you know but what I'm saying? Don't, though. Exactly. <laughs> and but, so. but, but, but to say you acting just like your mama. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And how many of our kids... I mean, some cats listening to us now. How many of them have heard that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and you, if you're the only one there, that's, for me, that's a no-no. Right, right. That's a no-no. Mm -hmm. Your rejection issues, own up to them. They're yours. Mm -hmm. Your failures, they're yours. And that's why I love what you said, man, because we don't own up to our feelings, our emotions, mm -hmm. and we take that. We pass it down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and that's what we're trying not to do. And so, that's what we need other men who've gone through it, who's sitting in it, or have made it, 
I tell people all the time, no, you don't want to be with somebody who's still sitting in it. Right. You want to be with somebody who already got the victory right. and has taken that step further. Yeah. So when I'm talking about my feelings, I needed a brother like you. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, let, let, me, let me say something here. I mean, because when we're talking about, when we're talking about feelings and, and, and we're still talking about judicial system as well. Mm-hmm. So what do we do with those feelings when we don't understand the language? Mm-hmm. Kayla? This is the language in the system that you're talking about. And we, we, we're hurt, you know, we're, we're damaged, you know, we're, we're, we're trying to act like we got it together, mm-hmm. but we, we know that we're not, you know, together. I, I think it's been said throughout this conversation, number one is you got to inform yourself. The you, language you of the in, system. You got to get informed. You, okay. you got to get informed. And if you don't know, you got to go find somebody that knows. That's right. Okay. That's right. You know, the bottom line is, is, is right. it's not going to come to you. Absolutely. It's not going to come to you. And there's people out here who have gone through it before you. Mm-hmm. It's like I say, ain't nothing new under the sun. That's right. If, if the system has it beat you down, it done beat a whole lot of people down before right. it got to you. So yes. you ain't the first one. So you got to inform yourself. But again, going back again, I know I sound like a broken record. We, we have to be on journey. And what I mean by that is we have to be on the journey of discovery around self. Mm-hmm. Who in the hell are you? Look in that mirror mm-hmm. and make a commitment Mm -hmm. to saying you are the most interesting person in the world Mm -hmm. and it's my job to figure out everything I can about you. Mm -hmm. Now I ain't just talking about from a superficial vanity point. I ain't just talking about you know I'm good at this, I'm good at that, I'm gonna make myself to be out to be such and such. But from the standpoint of you are on a certain part of a timeline and that timeline extends way back before you. But what happened back there has something to do with you. Mm-hmm. Something was built into you from what happened way back mm-hmm. there. Mm-hmm. It's our job to figure out where we at. Mm-hmm. Because what comes along with that is a sense of purpose. Okay. Once I understand what happened back there, I understand what my duty is right now today. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. And one of the first things is being a father. And being committed to that role of a father, yes. and that's the thing. We could we we could make a baby. Anybody can make a baby. Mm-hmm. We've heard that a million times, mm-hmm. right? Anybody can stick it in right. and, and make something happen, right. Right? right? But when that baby, when that human being shows up, yes. that's a part of your journey that you cannot cannot turn your back on. And many of us attempt to do it. Right. And I believe that karma is hell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when it start beating on you, and it still go back to when, yeah. when you opened it up. I, I seen your fingers. The first one was knowing self, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. because if you don't know self, then it's easier to run from self. Yes, mm-hmm. meaning that many you. You know mm-hmm. what? I I, re, I remember. Uh, I had my first child. When I was 23, and you know, was married and everything. I went through a divorce, and and I remember that I had to go back and get to know me. I was used to being with folks, you know, and hung out with my brothers and my partners mm-hmm. and, you know, I did all of this. So I really didn't, you know, I got married young and, you know, and I had this child. I didn't really know me. I had to go to the movies by myself. Mm-hmm. I had to go to the park and walk the park. I had to re-examine who I was. Mm-hmm. Because there's no way that I can give anything to my child if I don't know who I am. Right. And so I'm piggybacking on everything that you guys are saying because identity is crucial. Huge. Huge. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and that's the reason we see what we see with folks killing each other, the senseless murders, uh, the, the, the uh, tra- human trafficking. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm a pimp, I'm a drug dealer, I'm a hustler because they don't know who they are. And if they let somebody else label them who they are, and they took on that identity that was never really created to be who they are. Mm-hmm. And, and, and there's thousands of young men in Oakland right. Right. With, mistake, with, with identity crisis. Right, mm-hmm. right. And, and, and how can you fight for a child if you don't even know who you are? Mm-hmm. How can you battle and go before someone, and, and, and really, you can't even fight for yourself. You know, when you get on an airplane, what's the first thing they tell you? <laughs> they say, 
before you do anything, put on your mask. Mm -hmm. You can't go and help this brother put his mask on if you don't have yours on first. Mm -hmm. You know, so, so that is the thing that we got, we got, to, we got some work to do. Mm -hmm. And I believe, and, and man, I, I thank you for initiating the fact that we come together even outside of this show that we can take parts, mm -hmm. you know, because that, that, that's what it's all about, is there's something that you're really good at that I'm not. Mm -hmm. And there's something that you are really great at that he isn't. Right. And, and, and there's something, Carrie, you flow in that, that you, Tyrone, you don't know nothing about. But man, if we can come together, which we don't do as a human race, if we can come together for the common cause to make a difference, then I'm not talking about Oakland. I'm talking about nationally. Because if you look at every urban community in America, mm -hmm. they all deal with the same thing. Mm -hmm. They got the same issues. And I, and I, like, I like how you put this, uh, the issues of identity crisis. You know, there was a shift in the early 70s, I would say, yeah. were actually started in the 60s with the Civil Rights Movement, mm -hmm. where we were focused on uh, getting the ability to sit at the counter and eat with our Caucasian brothers. Mm -hmm. And with that came a price. Mm -hmm. We began to go after the stuff. We, we wanted the things that made us feel like we were accepted mm -hmm. into on, other groups. Yeah. Yeah. And so we began to go after the jobs and the cars and the houses. Mm. And so even today, not just young men, young people, when you ask most people who are professional, who are you? They'll tell you what they do mm -hmm. as opposed to so who they are. Right. So we teach young people that what you do is a way to make money. Mm -hmm. And we have to teach them money as a tool. So that's a whole nother subject. Mm -hmm. But what we try to teach them is your role in that particular area of your life is not who you are. Mm -hmm. Your purpose is greater than your job. Mm -hmm. Your purpose is, and the greatest purpose that we have on this earth is to pass down wisdom and knowledge yes. to the next generation. Yes. Your greatest work is being a father. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The reason you took the job is to provide for your children. Mm -hmm. The reason you start pursuing self-development is so that the challenges you faced in life would not be the same for your children. Mm -hmm. And so when we get into these divorces, when we get into all this separation, we have to remember purpose. Mm -hmm that there was a history connected way back that our forefathers dealt with. They were trying to be acknowledged as men. Mm -hmm. They were trying to be acknowledged as providers. They were trying to be acknowledged as men who were not only socially conscious, but they were fathers committed mm -hmm. to making sure the next generation stood taller. Mm -hmm. And so we can't take this victim mentality mm -hmm. that somehow this has happened to me and I have to stay this way. No, mm -hmm. you can become a victor. You can overcome the challenges of divorce. It's hard, absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult. Mm -hmm. And there are stages of grief we've already talked about. Yeah. But it doesn't have to end that way. Right. So you can connect with people on this stage and others in your community mm -hmm. who have done it. There are men who have gone through divorce, raised their families, never talked bad about the other spouse because we were talking about mm -hmm. protecting the kids from rejection. Mm -hmm. When we talk about the other spouse to you the children, we're actually talking about them. Right. And they know it. So part of that is owning mistakes that we've made, mm -hmm. as you mentioned. Mm -hmm. Be willing to share with your children past mistakes and letting them know that dad didn't know. Mm -hmm. So now that I'm informed, this is what I'm going to do different. Mm -hmm. And that's important as we continue this dialogue. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, again, you've seen another segment of uh, Can We Have a Conversation? Black Men for Social Justice. Uh, fighting for the cause, trying to make a difference in young people's lives and even the, those that can't fight for themselves, to give them hope, uh, to give them a future, to let them know that there is a generation of young men that are lost and we're trying to fill in that gap to help them with that loss so that they can have some tools that we don't lose another 10, 15 generations, but that we can stop because a lot of this begins at home. And so we as men, I commend you all for coming. Uh, I'm looking forward to the other dialogues offset. And even when we come back to Can We Have a Conversation. Thank you for joining us. and can't wait to see you again. God bless you.